Hi everybody, we are going to do some problems together and I'm going to do some uh, discussion about section 1.3. This is a really, really important section to make sure that you understand and have a good grasp on. So I really hope that you take time to watch this video um, so that you can get a really good grasp on what we do here because you are going to use it all the way up until the final exam. Um, and I bet that you'll use it in your career as well. I know I still use this all the time and it's a tool that even serves me now that I'm not in a professional kitchen, I still use it all the time at home. Um, so what we're learning in section 1.3 is how to convert between units of weight or volume. So in the classroom, if we're together, you will learn that we use a particular resource that's found in the back of this book, starting at about 269, page 269, called the Book of Yields. And for those of you who would like to access the entire Book of Yields, that's a resource that you could purchase. You could buy the physical book. I think there is a DVD. There might even be some sort of digital copy that you can buy now, but you do not have to buy that for this class. You have everything you need um, in the back of this book in that abridged version of the Book of Yields. Okay, so some things to keep in mind is that we can never do a conversion between the units of volume and weight because we have no idea the mass of a unit of volume. So let's talk about some of the units of volume that we've discussed. That's a cup, right? Let's say that that is a tablespoon and let's assume that this would be a gallon container. These are all units of volume. And because they're units of volume, we know that whatever we're pouring into it, whether it be a liquid or a solid, um, we would take, if we wanted this to be one full cup of volume, let's say this was confectioner sugar, we would pour the confectioner sugar in here, and I'm not gonna take up your time to fill up the whole thing, but you understand that I would fill into the lines and I would fill this all the way to the top here um, with one cup of 10X sugar, okay? Same thing if I was using, let's just keep going with something sweet. If I was using a tablespoon, I could fill this with vanilla or almond extract or something like that. And I would fill it all the way up to the top line on the one tablespoon measure so that I had precisely one full volume unit tablespoon of vanilla. And then let's say that this is a solid now. Let's say for this, um, this is flour. And this was one gallon container. I would take the flour and I would fill this all the way up to the top, filling in all that space in there so that there was no gaps for air. And then you see typically with flour, you take a knife and you level the top off so that it is specifically full to that volume vessel of exactly what you want. In this case, volume. Now here's the problem. We can't say that one cup here is equal to eight ounces, which is weight, because in the case of all of these, they have very different masses. So let's turn to the Book of Yields and let's find the section labeled sweeteners. Um, I think it's one of the last sections, so in the maybe 270s. Um, sweeteners are on page 275. Let's look at powdered sugar sifted. Ounces per cup tells us that in the case of powdered sugar sifted, one cup of it weighs 3.6 ounces okay so if we were to take this and pour it let's just say that this was a digital scale you know here's the scale that gives us a digital reading and here's our teared bowl that we would pour the one cup into this would register 3.6 ounces okay so that is the weight of this unit of volume in the case of confectioner sugar but if we didn't fill this with confectioner sugar, let's say that this was the flour now. If this was the flour, we would now need to turn to the Book of Yields to find out what is the weight or the gravitational pull of one cup of flour now. Um, and so if we go and do that and find the weight of a cup of flour, um, let's see, on page 274, one cup of all-purpose flour now weighs 
4.6 ounces. So that was confectioner's sugar, this is flour. So flour is much more dense than confectioner's sugar and, and different kind of sugars would be even more dense, right? You can imagine this is a cup of powdered sugar. If it was a cup of granulated sugar, I think it's 7.1 ounces. So it's, you know, it's almost double this. And if it were brown sugar, it would be even more dense. So you can start to play with those, um, those pieces of information in the book of yields to get that answer. So now if this cup was filled with flour and we poured it on a scale, we would get a reading of 4.6 ounces. So that's why we can never, ever, ever say that one cup equals eight ounces because ounces weight, cup is volume. And in the case of powdered sugar, the volume cup weighs 3.6 ounces weight. In the case of flour, the volume cup weighs 4.6 ounces weight, okay? Um, so with that said, let's dive into some of these problems and work through two or three um, in this video so that you can um, work along with it and hopefully play it back if you're struggling at all. So let's start, let's look at page two, the sweet polenta cake. And these are a little bit easier than the word problems because as I said, you see exactly what to convert from and what to convert to. They pull information out of the book of yields for you and give it to you in parens right underneath the ingredient. So these are kind of easy. That's why they put these first. Get your practice in doing these and don't forget to head to the back of the book to check all the answers. The answers are typically in math books, in the back I should say, because Having the answer alone doesn't teach you how to solve the problem. You need to use the formulas correctly. But the, the reason it's there is for you to self-check and to say, wow, I'm getting these all correct. I really have a good handle on this. Or, oh no, something's wrong. I can't arrive at the answer found in the back of the book. So I need more, more practice or more help. Okay, so let's look at the sweet polenta cake. Um, and let's start with vanilla extract. So in the case of vanilla extract, okay, they're giving us the information um, that one cup weighs eight ounces in the case of vanilla. So if we had a cup of vanilla and we poured that content of the cup on a scale, it would weigh eight ounces, but they want us to convert one teaspoon of vanilla the question is how many milliliters is that? So we're doing a teaspoon to milliliter conversion, okay? So the first step of the bridge tells us whatever we have here that we want to convert, that if we find any fractions or mixed measurements, we need to get rid of those. We don't, so that's done. The next step asks us what kind of conversion is this? So we ask ourselves, is teaspoon volume or weight? And the answer is volume. And then is milliliter volume or weight? And that answer is also volume. Milliliter is a metric system unit of uh, its metric volume, okay? So we learned last week that if our conversion is a volume to volume conversion, we did not need any information of the book of yields or any equivalency between weight and volume. So this right here, um, folks, is a, is a trick. Okay, so you don't need this at all to solve that because you're going from volume to volume and you never needed the help from the book of yields or help from the book in order to convert between units of volume. So whenever you're converting uh, between small units of US customary volume and trying to get to the metric system volume, I recommend that you write yourself a note to always use fluid ounce as a navigational step to get there, okay? So if we want to use fluid ounce, we need to say to ourselves, where can I put this in the bridge? Do I wanna put it next to teaspoon or do I wanna put it right before milliliter? Because whatever I put it next to, I'm going to have to give an equivalency. And I don't have memorized um, how many fluid ounces are in one teaspoon. But I do have memorized an equivalency of how many milliliters are equal to one fluid ounce. And we learned that on page nine and hopefully you have that memorized now. So I'm gonna use this one that I know I'm gonna use all the time. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it right next to milliliter because I know that I'm gonna wanna use this to help me to jump from US customary volume to metric volume. Now we're stuck here. Now we ask ourselves the question, 
what's a unit of volume that I could put to jump from teaspoons to fluid ounces? And the most logical one there would be tablespoon. Because we know the equivalency, or we should know and have memorized, that there are three teaspoons in a tablespoon, and we know or should know uh, the equivalency between tablespoon and fluid ounce, right? So now it's time to just go ahead and start converting this out, okay? So if we, um, if we bring one teaspoon down, and then the step of the bridge tells us to bring this unit down here and this unit up here, we know that there are three teaspoons in one tablespoon. Now we keep going because we have two more steps before we're done. Now tablespoon comes down here and fluid ounce comes up here. And we can stop and we can ask ourselves the question, how many tablespoons are equal to fluid ounce? So assuming that you forgot that or assuming that you're gonna forget the next one, don't forget to go back to page nine and you'll see that there is half of a fluid ounce in one tablespoon or one tablespoon is equal to half of a fluid ounce, okay? And then we bring fluid ounce down here. Our last step is milliliter. And remember I said to put an equal sign up when you've reached your converting destination. And now it's time to either head back to page nine to find out how many milliliters are in one fluid ounce or hopefully your memory. And that is 29.59 milliliters in one fluid ounce, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to, and I'm gonna use my calculator here, we're going to multiply one times one times 0 0.5 times 29.59, and I'm gonna come down here, we're going to get 14.795, and remember from class that we wanna take all of these numbers in this class out to four decimal place or the ten thousandth place whenever possible okay so don't go rounding too soon we would never round to 15 you wouldn't even round to 14.8 take it out to the three decimal places that it gave you and then we're going to multiply by the bottom which is a bit easier we get one times three times one times one gives us three so now when we simplify that we should get an answer for um, vanilla of 4.932 milliliters. 4.932 milliliters of vanilla is the equivalency of one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, let's do one word problem together um, and then hopefully you will feel confident enough to do these problems on your own in your homework assignment. So let's see which one we want to do. Let's do 17. So 17 says a recipe calls for three pounds of whole grape tomatoes. How many pints of grape tomatoes do you need? Okay, so a recipe calls, the reason that I picked this is because I said that those, um, those kind of visual recipe problems were easier because they told you exactly what to convert from and to, and they pulled out the Book of Yields information. This one is gonna have you go to the back of the Book of Yields, um, and like the one before, that was volume to volume, so we didn't need the Book of Yields, but in this one we do because we're converting from three pounds, which is weight, to a number of pints, which is volume, okay? So we want to convert from three pounds and we want to know how many pints that is, okay? But if we go through the steps of the bridge, step one, we don't have to worry about. Step two says, what kind of conversion is this? Well, it's a weight to volume conversion. So we do need information from the book of yields. We don't know what a volume unit of um, tomatoes weighs. So we're gonna need to go find that out. And this is a two sentence problem that doesn't give us any information. So if you go ahead and turn to the book of yields in the uh, vegetable section, you can find that one pint of tomatoes, one pint of these, I think they're grape tomatoes, yep, weigh 11.2 ounces, okay? 
So this is the information that we're going to need to use in our conversion in order to convert between weight and volume. So let's go ahead and think of how we're going to use this in here. Now remember, the book of yields information is like a marriage vow. You know that vow that says what man has, or yeah, what God has joined together, let man not separate. We're going to use that. What the book of yields has joined together, let student not separate. So you can never separate these two units that are are joined by an equal sign in the book of yields, okay? So we have to use pint somewhere. Ooh, there's pint there. And we have to use ounce next to it. Well, we don't need anything after pint, so it's certainly not going there. So we know that ounce goes right here before pint. Now we have to ask ourselves the question, do we need something in between here? Or do we know the equivalency of how many ounces are in a pound or what, what fraction of a pound um, is, is an ounce, okay? So we know that, we should have memorized, or you might even have come to class knowing that there's 16 ounces in a pound. So we can go ahead and convert, starting with three pounds over one, pounds comes down, ounce goes up, why? Because we're following the steps of the bridge, and we just said that there are 16 ounces in one pound, now ounce comes down and pint comes up, we put our equal sign up, and now we should be alarmed because we just put volume over weight and we can't do that without the book of yields but we have some information so we found out that one pint weighs 11.2 ounces so if we multiply across the top we get 48 and if we multiply across the bottom we get 11.2 and then if we divide that we get 4.29 pints and that is our answer three pounds of grape tomatoes would require us to buy 4.29 pints. And just like I said before, with the vanilla and rounding, we don't want to round yet. Don't worry about the why yet. Just know that you're not going to round until you get to about chapter four. Okay, so that's your answer. Hopefully that those two problems help you to solve uh, the workbook problems in section 1.3. Reach out to me if you need help and have a great week.